Okay. Well, it's time for Illustration Masterclass with me, Kyle T. Webster. Thank you for joining me. Today, this is fun, we're going to do some Impressionist painting in Photoshop. How about that? Any fans of the Impressionists out there? I know you're out there. Let me know in the chat. We've got a lot of people joining us over here on uh, Behance. That's be.net slash Adobe Live. Now, if you're watching over on Twitter or on YouTube, just know that I'm following the chat on Behance, and that's where I can answer your questions and see your comments. I see that we have Wade here and um, Moat, as well as Steven and Cryo and uh, Jack. Hello, Jack. Nice to see you, Tunk. Nice to see you as well. All kinds of folks piling in for this illustration masterclass today. And uh, as I said, we'll be working in Photoshop. Now you could do this in Photoshop, you could do it in Fresco as well, because all of the brushes I'm using today work in both applications beautifully. Let's head on over to Photoshop here. And um, I've got a little sketch. This is very rough. I thought, oh, you know, maybe I do some person sitting on a boat and fishing. So this is what I came up with. Very loosey-goosey. As you can see, most of what we're doing today is painting. It's not about the sketch. It's not about the composition or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm really just going to be kind of making up the colors as I go. <laughs> so let's see where that goes. Uh, now, let's talk a little bit about libraries. Folks, if you don't use libraries and don't know what libraries are, well, I think you should. Here's the deal. Look over here. What I have here is a library. I call it Impressionist Brushes 2022. What it, is, what it is is a bunch of brushes that I've created, not only in the Impressionist brush set itself, but other brushes I've created in the past that work well for this kind of style. And I've just thrown them into this little library for myself. So that's easy access, they're right here. Uh, now, how do libraries work? Okay, libraries, if you wanna think of it this way, let's see, imagine if you could take all of your favorite digital tools brushes, uh, color themes, shapes, and um, patterns. I mean, all of it. Fonts. And you could throw them all into a little suitcase. And you could take them with you everywhere you go around the world. You could sign into anybody's Photoshop anywhere in the world on any machine and your libraries would just show up automatically with all your goodies. That's how they work. And you can just keep on creating them. You can delete them. You can manage them with your Creative Cloud app on the desktop or Creative Cloud on the uh, iOS or wherever and uh, on the web as well. So very easy to manage. So this is what I've done. I've created a little library here. So I can just pop over here and grab any of these brushes and um, I'm good to go. Speaking of the brushes, always got to mention this up top. If you want to grab them, where do you go? In Photoshop in the brushes panel, come over here to the top right corner and here you see get more brushes. When you tap on Get More Brushes, what's gonna happen is you're gonna launch out to the web and what you're gonna find is a sign-in page. Use your Adobe credentials to sign in and then grab all the brushes you want. There are 2,000 plus brushes to play with. Today I'm using the Impressionist brushes and you can find those there as well. Alrighty, so let's jump to it now. What makes these brushes have the quality that we're looking for in this kind of work? Now, if you're familiar with the work of people like uh, Monet, Claude Monet, or uh, let's say, for example, Pizarro, or perhaps um, Seurat, Seurat, how many of my French are, um, people like this, uh, then you know about this Impressionist movement in the um, late 1800s, more or less, and all these paintings that came out and the brilliant colors and the, the very vibrant and expressive brush strokes and so on. Um, so I really wanted to capture that in Photoshop using uh, custom brushes, and I think this is the way to go. And here's what we're gonna do. Demonstrate for you the qualities of one of these brushes, the Cezanne brush here. Let's grab a little blue. I'll zoom in so you can really see this in action. Um, now here I just have a separate layer for the sketch and under here, nothing, okay? So just for the moment, I wanna demonstrate with this brush what it's gonna do. Now in addition to the marks that it's making right there, and you can see how those look very kind of dotty, right? Um, you'll notice that the color is changing slightly, all right? Now the way this works is, again, thanks to the magic of color dynamics. Let's go over to our brush settings and just check color dynamics right here. Color dynamics. What do color dynamics do? They allow you, with each brush uh, mark that's made, okay, and this is every successive stamp of the brush itself onto the canvas, to change 
the hue, the saturation, and the brightness or value of that color that you've selected by a certain amount. And here we'll see that these are quite low, 11% is not high. Okay, so we're sticking within a region there, a range, I should say, of uh, blues that are similar to the color that I selected. Okay, so if I were to change the brightness jitter to a factor of, let's say, like 15 or so, and bring the hue jitter down to nothing, now you'll see what's happening is a different kind of a mark. Okay, and what this is doing is it's not really adjusting the hue so much as it is just the value or brightness of that hue. So this is great because it gives you a lot of control over the end result. Another thing you'll notice now, if I use full pressure, okay, you're gonna see a wide range of values in there. And this more sort of a sharp, crisp separation between those, all right? But watch this, here, I'll, I'll put that over here so you can do this as a point of comparison, okay? Boom, boom, boom. Over here, I'm gonna use lighter pressure and do the same thing over and over and over again. And what you're gonna get is a much softer result, okay? It's almost as if some of those colors are blending a little bit. Uh, there's a more subtle take on the whole thing. And in addition to that, you also get a little bit of a canvas texture coming through, okay? This is because these brushes are also responding to pen pressure, all right? And so that's gonna allow me to take advantage of that when there's an area where I don't want there to be so much of a separation um, between the values or the hues that are in a specific area. I can just kind of soften them by using light pressure with my stylus, okay? Kyle, do you play that guitar back there, asks Peter. I do, I do, Peter, yes. Um, I have an electric guitar that used to be on my right side here, but I've moved that into the living room where I like to when the day is done, I like to sit there and turn it up and just play some of the songs I like to play on the electric. Yeah, but I do love that little guitar back there too. Actually, you can plug that one in as well. It's pretty interesting. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and we're gonna get rid of all this and get to the painting. Now, all the brushes I'm gonna use today take advantage of these kinds of things that I just showed you, color, dynamic, color dynamics, pardon me, and um, also the pressure that I use to paint. So uh, we're gonna start by just painting in sort of a backdrop here. And I think I'm gonna do something, um, I think I'll go like really traditional here. We're gonna have a blue sky, all right? Blue sky, blue sky, blue sky. And there are so many choices. Um, now I could use multiple brushes for this, but probably what I'll do is wind up using one more or less and a couple others just to kind of stick with something that's kind of similar with the look. Actually, before I do that though, I do want to show you something really fun here, and that's the Seurat brush. I love George Seurat. Um, I love especially his drawings, actually. His paintings are great, but his drawings are beautiful. Uh, but for the paintings, you know, he's a pointillist, a lot of pointillism. So, um, pardon me, let me just grab that brush. There it is. Beep, beep, there we go. Uh, you can see pointillism, instant pointillism on the screen. Look how fun and easy that is to do. Okay, I can make that brush big, like this go nuts with it. See that? So uh, that's pretty fun to be able to do instant pointillism in your art. So if you want to do some Syrah looking stuff, you know, go ahead and have some fun with that. That's a blast. All right, whoops, I didn't mean to get rid of my sketch there. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. All right, we'll reduce the opacity of that sketch. We'll knock it back to 40%. It's gonna be very faint. Uh, don't worry if you can't see it that well. I'm going to start painting anyway. Uh, I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply um, so that whatever I do, should I should be able to still see it underneath, okay? Let's go now to, um, I think this Monet brush might be a good place to start. See that? Very nice. Very nice to play with that brush right there. Um, and just throw in a little sky. And this is the thing, you can just go crazy, go in all kinds of different directions with the marks that you make, etc. And um, it's like cheating because you're automatically going to get all these ranges of colors right here and a little bit of texture and all that goodness um, in the marks that you're making. But the beautiful thing is that you're not even having to worry about doing this with individual tiny little brush strokes like uh, these great French and um, other European masters would do, right? They would really, it'd be a painstaking thing. Select a color, put it down, select a color, put it down, and build up. Uh, that surface in this way uh, over time, okay? 
But here we are, just throwing it in there. No big whoop, right? It definitely feels a little bit like cheating. Throw some of that color down here into our uh, our water. And I'm actually, I'm gonna go lighter than this. I'm gonna move this up this way. I'm gonna go a little lighter. Uh, make my brush a bit bigger here and just hit some of this with a lighter color. I'll let some of it come through though, every now and then, see that? Every now and then, just let it kind of pop through like that. And that's it. Now, if we zoom in, you can see all that good textural goodness with the canvas and all that other good stuff. Um, all right, let's see. Any questions? You're getting addicted to these illustration masterclasses, says Caroline. Well, hey, all right. This is a safe drug, okay? It's not going to hurt you. Not going to hurt you. All right, there we go. So, got our sky right there. I'm going to go a little richer here. A little more green and a little, a little darker. Throw that in here for my for my water, and I'll mess around with this um, later as I get to reflections and things like that in the water. Okay, but for now I'm just putting some color down so I have something to start with. We'll see how that all plays out. All right now, if you're looking for variety in the in the marks that you're making, I mean you're getting them already with this brush, right? But there's other things you can do. You could, as I said before. You can play with um, some of these other brushes and just make some marks to them and see how well they play. For example, we have this Monet brush. We have Monet 2 as well. And okay, that's going to give you a different kind of a mark. It's going to play nicely though with this brush. If I grab another color and just kind of play that on top like this, let's see what that looks like. All right, and then just go over it like this. Bum, bum, bum. And anybody who's looked at the work of Monet will recognize this sort of quality that you're seeing here in these marks that I make like this. And these will follow the direction of the brush as I move it, okay? And that's a really convenient thing um, because then I can decide if I want to just kind of mix it up or if I want to have sort of a uniform direction that the paint is kind of moving or the, rather the, the brush strokes are moving, if you will. Um, this is a nice thing to be able to control. And very easy because, as I said, I'm using a stylus, so every time I move it in one direction or another, the, uh, the brush is going to just go follow along very nicely. All right, we can bring some of that sky blue down here into the water in this part right here. I can use a light bit of pressure with the green on top of that just to soften that. Occasionally that'll bring out a little bit of a canvas sort of a look, which is really nice. Go back to that original Monet, grab some more right there. Again, use light pressure to kind of blend and bring that all together. A lot of sampling with the eyedropper tool. Now, if you watched last week's uh, class, I believe it was, or it might have been two weeks ago, I did a um, keyboard shortcut or key command um, illustration masterclass. Very important to look uh, look that up if you don't know um, your key commands because this is the efficient way to work when you're doing digital painting is to use the keyboard and constantly switch tools, zoom in, zoom out, move your canvas around. Things like using the space bar like this, space bar plus the command key to zoom in or control key on a PC or Windows environment. Um, this is what I wanna do is this really makes me just stick with the brush tool and not have to come over to my toolbar and make changes there. I don't want to do that, all right? Um, so, good things are happening now. I'm gonna move on uh, to this foreground. So we've got sort of this middle ground, background. We have yet to really attack what's happening here. Uh, maybe I'll go there at first, actually. I should probably do that. I should go into the background again and mess around with some of those trees. We do have some different options here for the kinds of marks I can make. And, you know, like this Cezanne brush, which I demonstrated earlier, might be kind of fun for playing around with that area. I want to go a little more green and a little darker here and just see what that does. Okay, see if that, that feels a little sharp, maybe get a little softer. The Cezanne 2 brush, I think, was a little softer, if I remember correctly. Yeah, a little bit softer there for that. You can size it down if you want to get into, like, some more detail work, okay? like this, and that's just going to give me some, some, some foliage. I'm going to lay in a shape back there, and I can come in and sort of massage that later. 
Actually, I want to see just a couple other options that we have here to play with. I like this scrappy canvas. I remember that brush. I created that for one of the... Um, oh yeah, that feels good. For one of the uh, updates, the seasonal updates. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was the spring 2020 seasonal update, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I can always double check for you right here because I've got all those brushes listed. Um, let's check it out. We've got spring 2020 right here. And um, let's see. There it is, Scrappy Canvas. Yeah, spring 2020 was the set that included this. Now for now, I'm just gonna throw in uh, these shapes and keep them kind of loose. Um, if I wanted more variety in the range of hues and values, what do I do? I come over here and I just customize this brush or transform it momentarily for what I want. I'm gonna bring that brightness jitter up a bit, knock that hue jitter up to a factor of three. And that's gonna give me a little bit more action in those strokes, okay? It's gonna look pretty nice right there. I'm also gonna come in here and I'm pressing pretty hard right now to, um, to get full opacity. I'm gonna reduce the brightness and contrast of that, of that texture that's showing and just increase the height a bit. And that'll make it so that I don't have to use quite as much pressure to lay in um, fuller amount of color. Okay, so I'm not having to do, uh, use so much pressure to just get that in there. Okay. All right. So far, so good. I can see my sketch coming through. For those of you who are having trouble seeing it, let me just bump it up in opacity. Hopefully now you can see that a bit more clearly. Okay, that sketch I'm using. I can also always come in and lock my layer transparency and change the mode, uh, pro pro uh, pardon me, the color. There we go, see that? Makes it a little darker for you. I just made the color blue. And again, I used a key command for that. I did an option, delete, option, delete on my keyboard. And what that did was it made it possible for me to just um, quickly use the foreground color to fill in uh, that whole area, okay? So I've got my little shoreline back there, okay? And it's not like a, a perfect horizontal. And the reason for that is I just thought that would be boring. And I also didn't want this to be a really large lake. I wanted it to be a small part of the lake. Um, so I didn't want to create this a great amount of distance between the foreground and the background. Um, let me get a little bit more intimate, a bit of a smaller kind of space here. You could probably hear me occasionally. I'm like sort of really using some pressure and stabbing that canvas a little bit just to add these sort of brush strokes that sit up on the surface a little bit. Okay, and if I hide the sketch for a second, you'll see what I mean. It's these little sections like right here, okay, or here, where you see a bit more definition, a bit more sharpness um, in what's happening there as I paint, okay? All right, now back to it. Back to it. So we're just gonna throw in a bit more background here. All of this, by the way, you know, for now, it's all just one color more or less, right? Um, but I can always later come in and do some punchy business, like make this a little warmer, a little brighter, and then just in one little section, you know, pull out a tree or something like this just to suggest that there's something interesting going on there, right? Different kind of a, a tree or something, you know? And then just paint around it again. I do a lot of this where I kind of go um, additive subtractive, I would say it's kind of like that, or it's more like paint around the shape of something. So paint the shape and then use the background color that's near that shape and paint around it, that kind of thing. It's, it's a helpful thing to do. Um, you know, punch this forward here, grab this color back here and just kind of chip away at it, carve away at it, and that kind of thing. And if we hide our our sketch there, you'll see what I mean, okay? And then I'll come in here later and I'll be a little bit more careful with that, um, that edge of that water, right? Where I would maybe want to grab this color and just go a bit warmer and a bit darker. Um, and then use a brush that gives me a little less of a scattering kind of effect 
Um, something for that might be like this new impressions brush, which if you watch, you'll see that I have a bit more sort of control over over that edge right there, like this. Okay, just like that. And I can also come up here and I can kind of get picky with all that. So that might be a way to, to go just for that edge. And then I would go back to another, another brush. Um, here we go. I'm going to try and follow my sketch a bit, a bit more carefully here, even though I haven't really gotten to this, this phase of refining stuff since I'm here, you know, can't hurt to just play around a bit and, and get a bit more picky with that stuff. You know? And uh, there's so many other choices here. I've got this willow brush. Um, I've got uh, this French fat bristle brush. You can see what that does, right? More bristly kind of strokes. And that also could be really nice for the foliage. I could pop some of that in here. Just occasionally just throw that up in there. See? That's working nicely right there. Can soften that connection there between the shoreline and the foliage back there. And let's come back to that um, where were we? Scrappy canvas. I'm gonna size that down. Using the bracket keys, that's also in that lesson from last week. The bracket keys really are great. They allow you to very quickly size your brush up and down, up and down, okay? Really great. So quick, so easy, so convenient. All right, this is the color I wanna sort of pull down into the water, size that brush up and just go nuts with it here like this, just pull it down. Oops, went too far up, there we go. And we could use that new impressions again. Remember that the seven most recently used brushes are always saved right here, okay? Important to note. making some adjustments to the color dynamics there for that brush. And then we can pull some of that color here into the water like that, just doing some nice reflections. See that? Look how fun this is. It's like cheating to be able to make all these different kinds of marks with so little real effort, honestly. I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm trying that hard here to make this work. It just happens because the, the brushes uh, are doing all the heavy lifting. So I certainly don't have the technical skill of a, of a Monet or anybody like that, but what I do have are some really handy tools here that can get a lot of work done for me. All right, so I've, I've really been moving along here with the water and with the with the foliage in the background. Let's see if we have any questions. Um, such a funky thing, I've wondered who this Kyle is and why do I have all his brushes for quite a while, says Mick. <laughs> Mick, it's me, I'm the guy. That's why they're named Kyle brushes, because I named them after myself, me and my big fat ego. Um, you can save the color you use, uh, what are you talking about? Oh, so, oh, let me just make sure I save this, uh, in, um, what was the question? When you change the setting of the brushes, is the change going to be permanent? No, it is not, but you can always save a new brush as Peter is pointing out. And the way you would do that is if I made some changes to this brush, for example, I would just come down here to this little plus sign in my brushes panel, and that is where I would save it. Make a new brush, call it whatever you like. Don't have to call it Kyle anything if that's you know if that's not your bag, then change it, right? 
call it whatever you want. A lot of people I know actually, um, they take the brushes they like best and they completely rename them anyway. They don't like to have um, such a long name. And I admit, some of the names, I apologize, they are a bit long once you add the, 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 the bunch they came from, like the little category or the main set name in front of it, which I did a lot in the old days because I had to let people know which set contained which brushes. So that as much as that was useful back then, today maybe not so much. Maybe people don't need that assistance and so you can change that. You can go ahead and, and change it, rename it, rename the brush, do whatever you want. They're your brushes. All right, so things are looking nice here. We're getting some water, we're getting some sky, we're getting a little background there. We have yet to play around with our um, our, our um, foreground, right? We haven't yet done anything there, but we will. We will be doing that shortly, okay? So don't worry. Okay, so this new impressions impressions uh, brush has been good to me. The Monet brush has been good to me. Um, liking where we're heading with all this, feeling pretty good. Now let's bring back our sketch for a moment. I'll knock that back just a little. I don't want it to be too in my face. Okay, and we have a little rowboat there. We have a tree in the foreground. I think we could probably start to mess with what's going on here with the foreground just to get things rolling there. Now I'm going to use uh, darker colors. I want to come over here. I'm just going to go a little darker. Okay. And I'm going to go a little warmer. That's what I want to do here. And that's going to be a nice place to, to start with laying some stuff in here. Probably I might go some lighter and dark. I'll go lighter and darker as I go because there's going to be more contrast here in the foreground. That's kind of the idea. Um, and let's uh, see here. We have so many choices. We have this French uh, fr uh, fat bristle, which we haven't yet played around with too much. Okay, that's what that looks like. Um, we have this uh, French sharp mess brush. Kind of looks like this. It's kind of fun. Um, let me see how that feels. Just throw some, some sort of marks in here in the foreground. See, so, yeah, that's kind of fun. You can use a combination of things here. So I'll, I'll just I'll start with that. Let's gonna do that. Um, gonna go a little warmer here and a little brighter. And we're gonna come over here and do this. Just throw that. And remember, I can always come over here if I wanna go nuts with my color dynamics. Change that, satur uh, that hue jitter and that brightness jitter and get even more interesting variation in, um, in the color. See that? You notice I zoom out a lot, it's because I like to see the big picture. You know what I mean, folks? I don't want to, if I get all nitty gritty too early, then I'm, I'm working around and busy with details that don't matter at this stage. I'm trying to see from a distance, like, how do things read? You know, I do this a lot. It's like stepping away from your canvas, okay? Zooming out and taking a little read to see how things are going, you know? Like, I might want to bring some of this color into uh, what's happening here. Like some of that might work nicely there for a little punch. See that? That might be a handy thing for me to do. Um, it's gonna unify a little bit more, the foreground and background. It's gonna unify the colors a bit more. Um, I think I think about these things sooner than later, you know? Now's the time to just sort of play around and make sure that um, these colors all read and things look good. Okay, bring our sketch back here. So that was a fun brush to mess with there. Um, we can mix it up again, go back to that Monet, for example, right? And uh, we can come in here, we can go a lot warmer here. We're gonna go warmer for that tree and really dark. And we're just gonna, that's not the Monet, come here you, there. That's the Monet. 
And I'm just gonna do this for now, just come through the middle. I'm not gonna go straight through all the way to the edge because I'm gonna clean that up with a, uh, a much uh, smaller brush, but just to get things going, I'm gonna start there. Let's look at our, let's look at our um, settings for this brush and let's increase the brightness jitter, okay? Right there. That's gonna be a lot more interesting. You'll see if I, as I come over here, what that does, it gives me a bit more of a sort of a tree barky kind of experience. All right. All right, so I'm gonna bring that down here, bring this down here, make my brush smaller using the bracket keys, okay. And we gotta remember that we're gonna come in and soften all that later. We'll, we'll clear that up, we'll make sure that reads. But I'm just gonna throw this in here for now. Light pressure, making things work. Do you have any course for us to study so we can learn how to paint like this before this live ends, Philippe? Um, no, I don't have any specific course. I hope that this serves as sort of a, a course in and of itself. Um, if you just watch this back a few times and, 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 and hopefully catch some of the little pointers and, and technique tips and whatnot that I'm I'm giving you here, hopefully that'll get you on your way and you'll be, you'll start to uh, figure out how to incorporate some of this stuff into your own work, into your own compositions, into your own ideas. Um, nothing I'm doing here is particularly special in that I'm not doing anything that's um, different from any other kind of painting. It's still, I'm still thinking about darks and lights and, you know, warms and cools and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm certainly by no means any expert in that department. I am not, you know, like a, a painter. Um, I know enough to get by and to get the results that I'm more or less looking for, but uh, certainly not somebody like a James Gurney or, um, or someone like that who could really just up your game you know go watch go watch some james gurney videos he's he's got a great youtube channel um he he'll he's the kind of person who you know can walk the walk and talk the talk um and blow your mind <laughs> he can do it all james gurney so um so check him out um, really, I'm here to talk more about sort of like digital trickery uh, for achieving some of these results that I'm going for. You know, these looks of traditional media and or of specific artists, like in today's case, you know, we're talking about uh, impressionists, you know, and and all their beautiful work, right? That's kind of what what we're talking about today, but. Um, That's the beauty of living in this uh, this plugged-in world these days, is you have all these resources. Oh my gosh, like, when I was in college, everything I had to do, I had to go find the right book in the library and just hope that that book would have good information, it would be, like, understandable, and I could, you know, get, get kind of what the author was trying to tell me, what the author was laying down, dude. blended my my eras there I get what you're putting down that's more of like a 60s thing yeah, I get what you're putting down 1960s lay it on lay it on me before my time man all right so um so what we want to do is we want to we want to bring this just a bit over this away so that we don't split that foreground area right down the middle of our canvas there. I just want to kind of keep that going right here. Um, and then we can 
take this and go darker and just hit along that edge there. So that's different brush time. Let's mess it up. What do we have here? Impressionist chunk. What does that do? Oh, it does that. Cool. Oh, I like that. Like for at the occasional, just that hit, boom, 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 just a, a shot of a little brush stroke like that. See that? Just bam, bam, bam. Get that in there like that. Just the occasional little s snap. Right? It's kind of a nice thing to do. Um, and let's bring our sketch back for just. Well, actually, you know what? I haven't really done too much with this tree. I haven't been paying. Haven't been giving it too much love, so let's see what happens if I try and just do that. A bit more action there, a bit more interest. Let's hit the edge of this with that, that brush. We can clean that up a little bit. So it's it's soft, but it's not like, you know, missing too much clear form there, too much, or shape rather. I want that, that silhouette needs to be tidied up a little bit. See that? We're just going to tidy that up a little bit. Okay, just tidying it up. Bit of cleanup time. Right? Any, anyone out there with kids? Remember the cleanup song? If you had young kids, they would do that in, in school when it was time to clean up. Clean up, clean up everybody everywhere. Clean up, clean up everybody. Do your share. <laughs> now, here's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning up, but I'm also just adding bits and pieces of, of coolness and action where I want them, you know? It's all the brushes. It's the brushes. The brushes make it so easy. It's just, again, I always say this is like cheating, isn't it? But you got to use the tools you're given. Use, you know, we're given these tools. These are the, we have access to these. Let's use them. Let's do cool stuff with them, right? We might not have time. I'm sure we won't because it's only an hour. This masterclass barely an hour, in fact, um, to do all the things I want to do with this. But I think you're getting the hang of it. You're getting the idea. You're seeing what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here in the little time we have together. Um, and I hope, I hope you're getting ideas and seeing what's possible. Um, all right, now, just need a little bit of action right here. Okay, my, my thinking was it's like, like a hit of color. What I would do is take like a nice dark like this. And that's the wrong brush for sure. We got to use something else. Let's try something else. Um, how's this guy going to work? New impressions. How are you for this? Yeah, you might, you might do the trick. Let me see if I can go to my brush settings and go to shape dynamics and bring that down to zero. Okay, we'll increase the texture depth just a little bit now. Let's see how that works. That probably could work, that could work. Let's see, let's see, I'll make a new layer. And we're gonna try this. I'm gonna go like right here. So my idea was to have this little dark patch right here, and that might be too dark. I can always soften that. But I thought it'd be nice to have some um, some little flowers or something, or just like more of a sort of a distinct shape here. Or smaller shapes, like smaller detailed more like shapes for this area. So it doesn't, so not everything is so soft and quote unquote blurry that you don't get an idea of anything having, you know, some real, some distinct more like uh, shape to it, right? But I still want the language to be pretty consistent. So if I go back to this um, Monet 2, for example, and then Play around with this a little bit, just kind of go in and out of what I've got here. Bring that together and I can sort of... So a lot of this is me sampling color that's already there, okay, and then kind of painting around it. 
still want some of that dark to read, and I want it to work. But I don't want it to feel alien to the rest of uh, the piece right there, okay? So that's sort of the idea here. I want some more contrast there, so I'm using a lighter color. Okay, and then weird down there. I'm getting picky. I got to be careful. This is where I get I get caught because I start to like start using smaller brushes, start to get too picky, and then work on stuff that shouldn't be really defined all that clearly. Because um, then you run the risk of like losing the sort of personality of, of the piece. You know what I mean? So I got to be careful there. Um, so this isn't quite what I had in mind. It was more sort of, I wanted more of a blobby kind of a shape there. So I might just go a little cooler, a little bit lighter, and then using that original Monet brush, maybe just come in and let's see. Paint some of that in there like this. So some of it will still have some lines Kind of popping out. I'm just kind of breaking apart some of this business here. And let's go ahead and grab a bit of this and throw that up there and then come back in. All right, now the idea was for a pop of color. I thought maybe I'd try using that um, Syrah. There we go. And let's try this. We're going to go here. Just kind of suggest that there are little flowery bits there, and then we can sort of erase some of them as well using the same brush. Just kind of like go over like that. Just kind of see. I thought that may, I thought that might be kind of a nice thing to do right there. Um, oh, I don't know how I got up here and did that. That was weird. I think I'm on a separate layer, so I can safely erase that. Didn't mean to do that. Um, all right, pausing for questions. You like the painting, thanks. It's like a real painting, thanks. Um, looking to make sure I have no questions. If there's a question, you could repost it because I'm scrolling, I don't see anything, but I wanna make sure. Um, Nope. Okay, good. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep going. We're okay. Um, yeah, I want to make sure I'm not. If somebody does have something they want to ask me, I don't want to be leaving them high and dry. Make sure that we're all covered. Okay, um, so let's bring our sketch back. We have a little boat here, right there. Uh, we wanna paint the boat. So lots of brush choices, of course. Um, we could stick with that Syrah brush. Uh, we could try that Cezanne, Cezanne 2. French uh, fat bristle might, uh, might be a pretty good choice. Go ahead and do that. Let's use the French fat bristle. All right, and I'm going to come over this away. 
make it a little smaller and just gonna start with this side of the boat here and a little darker. And we're gonna make it follow that sketch. And remember, that was a really rough sketch at the beginning there. So, you know, I, I probably could mess with some of these, these shapes a bit. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and do like I did before where I was getting all fancy with cleaning stuff up, you know, with smaller, smaller bits and pieces and all that later. So I'll probably do more of that. But for now, we're just trying to kind of lay it in, get the general shape down here. Right, it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. It's probably gonna need a little bit of work and that's okay. Not too hard to, to play with it and make it better. You can always do that. You can always make it better. And that's one of the nice things you can do is you can make it better, easy peasy. We got someone sitting here in the boat. Um, and that person, we can just do a nice uh, dark color here. Go a little cooler, we'll go dark. And we'll, we'll throw in a little bit of shape there and I'll, I'll throw a highlight on them as well, but this is just to kind of get them in the boat. Now I can hide that sketch and I can sort of start to work around it and get picky with, with some shapes and things. And you know, I'm not gonna get really, really specific here because that would be sort of counter to the the sort of vocabulary that we've been using here um, for this for this piece, right? We don't want to do something that feels so different that it's not. It, then it feels like a different kind of a, a piece of work. It's not the same painting, you know. So we gotta be careful. There we go. I'm just uh, throwing in these these shadows here. So we kind of get a sense of how the the boat is a three dimensional object so I'm thinking about light you know maybe not everything I'm doing here is like totally accurate to what would really happen but that's kind of I'm not really too concerned about that I'm more just trying to make it so that we as the viewer understand that it has a top and a bottom and a you know and a back and, a, and all that it decides I just I want it to kind of be like oh yeah that's a boat I get that and it has sides to it you know it's an actual object with See what I mean? Um, now this is where I always freak out because I'm like, oh, I got to make a reflection for that. And it has to kind of feel like what a reflection would feel like <laughs> for that thing. Uh, that's always just, yeah, that's worrisome. Um, how do you do it? Well, you know, you experiment. I go, is it? So it's dark. I know it's got to be darker than than the boat here. Uh, so I go here and then I go, okay, is it warmer? Is it cooler? I guess I go warmer, I don't know. And then I just guess and I just kind of throw it in and see how it feels, you know, and just do this. Kind of make that shape 
just do what it does. And then later I can come in and I can I can mess with it. So I can look at it and say, okay, that looks really bad. Um, but that's okay. Come in here, soften, soften. You can break it apart, you know. You can make it less of a clear sort of a shape and more sort of having um, parts of it that are uh, a bit a bit less defined, a bit less sort of sharp, if you will, you know, like softer. Like that, try and make that work. And this is the kind of thing, again, I would say like, oh yeah, go look at what, whatever James Gurney does with, <laughs> with water. Because whatever he does is gonna be right. That's the way it works with James Gurney. He does it and it's right every time because he's a maniac. He's one of the best. What else is there to say? I mean, you know, some people, they just know how to do it. I think the name of his blog is Gurney Journey. Check out his blog too, I love his blog. It's great, it's been going for years. I remember looking at that blog, I wanna say like back in 2006, probably. Been around for so long. Could have sworn I was looking at it back then. Could have sworn. It's been around. Good old Gurney Journey, everyone's favorite art blog. Just teaching you all the essential stuff. I think this has turned into like a James Gurney appreciation stream. I, I don't even know what happened there, but that's what it is. I think that's what it became. Did I didn't mean for that to happen, but it's not a bad thing. You know, we should definitely take time to appreciate the artists who um, are awesome, making our lives easier, teaching us the good stuff. Right? What do you say, gang? I think so. All right, the question on everyone's mind, will Kyle finish this in the next two minutes? No, of course not. I won't. Don't kid yourselves. But did we make a lot of progress in like 55 minutes? I think so, come on guys, it's, you know. I'm not a miracle worker, okay? But hey, did you learn a little something? Did you get some ideas? I really hope you did. Check it out, here's our here's our little Fisher person. Here's what I'm gonna do. Got like a minute left, check it out. We're gonna go ba-boom, ba-boom. Just put a little hat on them like that. We go for one of these darker colors, we go warmer. And we just add a little pop like that. And what that does is it just gives us a bit more of a read on this person. Like, oh yeah, I can sort of see something different there. Cool. And then we use our really small brush and we grab this color and we go like this. And we've got our little 
fishing line there. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to say stop right here. This is where we're going to stop for the moment. Um hope you enjoyed that little impressionist painting for you in Photoshop. Uh we'll take a look here at the final. This is where I got, okay? So, hey, what are you going to do? Thanks a lot, folks. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remember to be kind. And um, hey, have a great weekend wherever you are out there in the world. Try some Impressionist painting this weekend, okay? And see how you go. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.